Hello, and welcome to the first ever book review for Xbox Era. I sent out an email to Gallery Books who are publishing Halo, the Rubicon Protocol, and they sent us one. So let's get right into it. Halo, the Rubicon Protocol is set in the roughly six month gap after the events of the opening cutscene of the game, Halo Infinite. The UNSC Infinity has been lost. The Banished have ambushed them, and over 70,000 human crew on board are attempting a panicked evacuation. Featuring several characters, of whom we find traces during the game's campaign, Mrs. Gay was given the unenviable task of filling in the gaps of an already defined story. Unlike the recent Shadows of Reach, she brilliantly pulls it off by writing a tale full of despair, hope, brutality, and new information on where the entire series is heading. I loved this book, finishing my initial read-through in a day. So let's break it all down in this as spoiler-free as possible review. There is no way to talk about this book without starting with Halo Infinite's opening cutscene and lightly delving into the various audio logs you find throughout the game that feature characters from this novel. If you haven't played the game yet, I'd recommend going through it before reading this as the novel is very much a companion piece. That's not to say you can't enjoy it without playing, but you will lose a lot of the context that is given through its 335 or so pages. Things start up with the ambush and destruction of the UNSC Infinity, as aforementioned. The perspective shifts through multiple protagonists throughout the entirety of the novel. You have Gen 3 Spartan soldier Benita Stone, Medic Lucas Browning, Spartans Nina Coven, and Thomas Horvath, and many more that are featured. The Banish have ambushed the UNSC the instant they approached Zeta Halo. Throughout the campaign of Halo Infinite, you can find audio logs that cover this battle along with the six months that Master Chief was left adrift in space after he failed to stop Atriox and his men. There are multiple characters whose fates we already know thanks to the campaign, so I greatly appreciated the introduction of new ones for whom we did not. It helped keep up the suspense during a shockingly brutal story. While the opening focuses on the evacuation onto Zeta Halo, things quickly shift to a relatively small part of the yet-to-be-destroyed ring. Areas such as the Tower and Conservatory feature heavily alongside the Reverie, aka Outpost Harmonious from the game. The author does a very good job of conveying the true size of everything, so that it doesn't feel disconnected from the smaller for video game balance and performance purposes version that we are used to from Halo Infinite. The Banished and their brute leaders are vicious, smart, and singular in their purpose. Never once did they show mercy, and at any time, every character in the novel felt at risk of losing their life. Unlike the aforementioned Shadows of Reach, though, it was never obvious who was or wasn't going to make it out of the new characters. Each injury or death felt both sudden and earned. I even grew attached to the ones whose fate I already knew from the game. The writing gives a proper depth over time, with none of the main characters falling into a one-note archetype. In a book so full of loss, pain, and suffering, I also never felt like it was being used for shock value. Another area where Mrs. Gay's writing shines is the action. She uses a mix of the internal and external to convey what is happening in a way that is both informative and exhilarating. I never once felt like I was reading a lecture from a military trainer. The focus was not on the maneuvers above all else, like in some of the previous Halo books, but instead on making sure you knew what was happening, how the characters felt in that moment, and guessing as to what could come next. They found the difficult balance of bringing a super soldier and alien-filled science fiction novel into something grounded enough to work in my mind's eye. As stated before, the book focuses on specific points in the roughly six months between the escape onto the ring of Zeta Halo and the start of Halo Infinite. Chapters tend to shift perspective and occasionally time from character to character. And it works. It never felt like a story thread was left hanging for too long, and it all ended up tying together well as the end approach. If you have played the game, it takes place almost entirely within the map we know, and after multiple delays, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the novel had to be changed to fit in there. Halo Infinite itself was originally delayed by 13 months, and the Rubicon Protocol followed suit. Mrs. Gay still manages to fill in most, if not all, of the gaps from the game's audio logs, while adding in new mysteries and potential paths 
that the future books and even infinite campaign content may take. Through her deft hand, I never felt confused about the layout of this part of Zeta Halo, broken as it is, thanks to her use of concise and clearly defined descriptors. This ends up going for the characters as well, as the book takes place over a decently long period of time. They are forced to adapt on the fly and grow into a group whose well-being always felt balanced on the point of a needle. I hope we get to meet them again, either in future novels or potential campaign content in the video games. In conclusion, Halo The Rubicon Protocol is an excellent companion piece to Halo Infinite's campaign. It's brutal, bloody, and at times terrifying to look into just a handful of the experiences that took place during that time period. I hope more is in the works from the transmedia team at 343 Industries set in this fascinating and enormous alien landscape of Zeta Halo. Kelly Gay has now written three damned good Halo books and helped create a solid path for the future of the franchise. And as always, thank you guys for watching so much. You can like, comment, and subscribe, and it really helps our channel grow. And we'll see you here next time on Xbox Era.